What's up guys, I've been using my Form 2 3D printer for a few months now, and today I'm gonna to give you my first impressions. Let's check it out. What's going on guys? Like I said, I've had the Form 2 for a few months now. Right off the bat, I have to say this printer is amazing. I absolutely love it. Um, it's pretty much had no failures other than when I switched to flexible resin and wanted to skimp on supports or played with supports. This thing has just printed every single time. It's, it's a fantastic machine. I'm gonna go over some of the, uh, the talking points. Okay, so price. This thing costs 3,500 bucks. You know, it's a, it's a bit expensive compared to some of the other machines, but you get what you pay for. I mean, the resolution on this, the prints are just gorgeous. You know, I print at medium resolution, and I've just never seen detail like this. They're absolutely stunning. Uh, I do a lot of detail work in ZBrush and on FDM printers, none of the detail comes through. This thing picks up every bit of detail that you put in your model. And I've only printed a couple at high resolution. It's absolutely mind blowing. Okay, it's hard to tell how much detail the camera's picking up here, but there's tiny, tiny little crevices in this mountain. Uh, you can see them right there. I mean, this thing is just amazing. Here's another of my ZBrush models. Another highly detailed one. Printed in clear resin. And as you can see right there, I mean, you could see every little scale on this guy's snake skin. Here's a prototype I made for somebody in flexible resin. A little more difficult to print with, but as you can see, it's definitely flexible. It's a really nice feel to it. All right, let's talk about the software that comes with this thing. It comes with preform software, which is your slicing, printing software. I found it very intuitive, very easy to use. Uh, looks really nice, very simple. And no complaints about the software. Uh, SLA printing is quite a bit different than FDM printing. The way you have to set up your model for support structure. So SLA printing can be a lot faster than FDM printing. I didn't realize it until I actually started using it. The shorter your prints are, no matter whether your bed is full of models or not, it will print much faster than if you have a tall model to print. And that's basically because the lasers can hit one layer a lot faster than an FDM printer would have to travel on the slicer lines. So you could fill your print bed with say 20 rings and print a lot faster than something that's the same mass that might be three to six inches tall, um, which is very cool. So what I've ended up doing is putting my models at an angle so it's a very low height and they'll print twice as fast. Okay, let's talk about the cost of the materials cost of the materials is very high. I was surprised how little I got out of a liter of the material resin. I'm used to a spool of PLA or ABS filament and I get a lot out of that. Um, I basically finished my first resin tank at about half of what I was expecting to get out of it. For 150 bucks for the basic materials, uh, it's very high, very high. Uh, I find myself not wanting to play with the supports. I went into preform, and I the only failures I had 
other than flexible resin, um, playing with the support material to make thinner supports is when I went in and tried to actually delete different points on the support structure. The software lets you go in and delete points and it will show you what areas might need it. Um, I found that a little inaccurate because every time I went and deleted points and spots I didn't want a support, those prints completely failed. Uh, if I just used the automatic settings, it worked like a charm every time. But I find myself not wanting to experiment with deleting points when the material is so expensive. Uh, PLA, I'll I'll print as many tests as I want because I feel you know the values there. You know, it's not that expensive. This stuff I'm very stingy with, so that's that's definitely a minus. Of this printer. Another minus is your resin tanks. So. I didn't see anywhere on the site, as far as expendables go, uh, that mentions you have to get a new resin tank after every one or two tanks of resin you buy. So basically, the lasers go through this tank here, right through the bottom, and the more points that a prints at, the more wear on the bottom of that plastic so you'll eventually see uh, little blur marks so wherever it's hitting in the same spot over and over again it starts to blur the plastic which will eventually you know that will blur your prints you know, it's not going to have as fine as detail I have heard on the 3D Printing Today podcast they had a guest on that said there's some kind of cleaner that you can buy and buff that out so you can get more use out of it. I have to look it up and buy it and give it a try. But what they tell you is one or two vets of resin and you should change that, which is $60 and then about another 12 for shipping. So that's, that's pretty expensive to swap out. Okay, so we'll talk about problems with the printer. When I got my printer, I could not connect my Wi-Fi. Uh, I thought it might have been my router at first, wasn't sure, so I just connected it via the USB. Um, that was an issue. I had another issue with the actual resin tanks where it wasn't reading my resin tank when I would switch from clear to gray. It told me I had an empty uh, tank in the tray. So I eventually found out that it's due to these metal contacts on the bottom of the tray and they mailed me some new ones. You are supposed to swap them out, um, clean them with rubbing alcohol and I didn't even get that far as my machine actually broke down. I was at the Science Museum for Mini Maker Fair in Buffalo and within 15 minutes of my <laughs> within 15 minutes of my 3d printing demo showing off the new machine uh, a woman comes up to me and says it says your motor stopped working so i checked it and the actual build platform went all the way down into the resin and the motors locked the motors jammed and the, the tray got stuck right in the very bottom of the resin which did not make me very happy as I spilled a bunch of resin all over the place trying to fix it and get it up while I had people coming up to me at Maker Fair asking about the printer. Uh, it was not good. I emailed Form Labs. It took them a couple days to get back to me. They had me take the thing apart. Um, I had a look at it. I'll show you the video of that. And they basically said, well, it sounds like something that you're not going to be able to fix yourself. So I mailed it back. They did mail me a refurbished machine. Took about three weeks before I got that. And this machine, the Wi-Fi works. Uh, I only had one resin tank uh, error where it said I had no tank in there when I did. 
Um, so I cleaned that off with rubbing alcohol and it seems to be working fine. Um, one other issue that I have is the cover comes down and there's a little magnet on the bottom. Well, it's supposed to close all the way and it reads the magnet to know that it's closed. Sometimes it tells me it's not closed and I just have to push the lid down a little further. That's not a big deal to me. Um, but the Wi-Fi is working. Uh, it's been printing fine, no motor jam. So it seems to be working great. Um, hopefully it stays that way. All right guys, that's it for my first impressions of the Form 2. I will have a full review up soon, but hopefully I got enough information to you so you can make a decision if you want to purchase it. My next video will be of Maker Faire New York City this past weekend. Uh, hope to have that up within the next couple weeks. If you like the video, please subscribe. Check me out on Instagram and Twitter. Right now my website's down because I've been hacked a few times the past few months, so I'm looking to switch hosting services, but it will be up soon. Remember, 3D printing is the future, and the future is now. See ya.